Hi, I'm John Ziegler, the creator of FramingPaterno.com, and I'm going to do another video breakdown of yet another example of media malpractice when it comes to the Jerry Sandusky scandal and Penn State. And this one is very, very personal because it deals with two people I've gotten to know pretty well. One person in particular I've gotten to know very well, NFL Hall of Famer Franco Harris, as well as Michael Pilato, who is the artist behind the mural in State College. And this is a story that aired on Fox Sports 1 a couple of nights ago by a reporter by the name of Bill Ryder. Although I'm going to tell you a lot of interesting things about Bill Ryder's reporting on this that you have not been told. I think it's going to give you a much different perspective than what viewers of Fox Sports 1 got on what really happened here. Unfortunately, it was all too common for this story, which has been absolutely ripe for media malpractice since the beginning. So I'm going to play a few clips of this, stop it and comment and give you the real insight on what actually was happening here. But here's how this story started. Even in a downtown mural created by artist Michael Pilato, Sandusky was in that too. And his very presence in a simple image tarnishes everyone else. stop there by that's the beginning the intro of this piece very well produced of course you may have noticed that they put in the statement there from Joe Paterno I wish I had done more without of course the most important part which was in hindsight which always gets left off whenever they're trying to claim that Joe Paterno admitted guilt when he did no such thing because he had no guilt but it's interesting to note it's clear that the people behind this piece Bill Ryder had this great idea that they were going to use the State College mural as a metaphor for what was really going on at Penn State, scrubbing the past away. And if you notice, the graphic actually scrubbed Joe Paterno off of the mural, which is not actually true. Joe, Mur Joe Paterno is, in fact, part of the mural. And I'm going to get to a little bit more about what they told Michael Pilato to get him to do the interview you're about to see. But first, I want, to see, I want you to see what actually transpired on air. Penn State may never be the same. Reputations have been ruined. Legacies destroyed. Two years later, Happy Valley remains a damaged place, still trying to understand itself. One man's evil changed everything. From the most powerful men at State College's most powerful institution, to men like Michael Pilato, whose artwork to honor an idea contained a lie behind it. You know, I drove up two days after we all heard the news and painted him out of the mural. A lot of people were asking me when am I painting Joe Paterno out of the mural. I get hate mail. I get you know letters from people that are pretty upset about Joe being on the mural. It's my own personal opinion that he really didn't know, didn't cover it up, like so many other people in this community. He was fooled. All right, now Michael Pilata did a great job there in a very difficult situation. However, he was told a lie in order to get him to do the interview. Michael told me personally that he was told that Bill Ryder, the person whose voice you hear narrating the piece, had had an evolution of thought on Joe Paterno, and at first thought Joe Paterno was guilty, but now he wasn't so sure, and he wanted to do a piece, basically, this is paraphrasing, that somehow two years later we now know more, and that it's not so certain what really did and didn't happen, and maybe Joe Paterno was actually innocent. That's what Michael Pilato thought he was getting involved with. Now, he did a great job in the interview. And by the way, isn't it interesting to note that the entire metaphor here is that Penn State or State College didn't get it because Joe Paterno was still on a mural. 
Jerry Sandusky was removed from that mural two days after a grand jury presentment, which we now know is full of blatant exaggerations and inaccuracies. Two days he was removed from the mural. It's not as if State College and Michael Pilato didn't get it or didn't bend over backwards to allow this media narrative to be credible and to not do anything that would be seen as somehow uh, fighting the allegations here. So that's Michael Pilato. Now, it's interesting to know that Franco Harris was told exactly the same thing about the nature of Bill's evolution of thought. And as we're going to see here in just a moment, Franco Harris does an interview, which I uh, am convinced was done under the similar false pretense, because Franco told me exactly the same thing that he was told through a third party that this reporter, Bill Ryder, had had an evolution of thought and wanted to present a fair expose two years later on the whole Joe Paterno angle of the Sandusky scandal. Listen to how Bill Ryder introduces and tries to demolish Franco Harris in this piece. Beyond Sandusky is fair game for the righteous anger and outrage his crimes produced in the rest of us. Do we listen to a man like Franco Harris, a legend dancing along the lines of extreme loyalty and conspiracy theories? This is someone who's gone from a Hall of Fame player to someone so convinced the free report is a hatchet job that his advocacy for Paterno borders on paranoia and obsession. We know. Paranoia and obsession, and he's a conspiracy nut. Now basically what Bill Ryder is doing there is saying, we're going to show you an interview from a famous person, an NFL Hall of Famer, that you're not to believe, because he's a crackpot and a nut, even though we're not going to tell you what he has said, what he has done, what he believes in, that is remotely consistent with that charge. And for Bill Ryder to get an interview with Franco Harris under a false pretense, and then to do a hatchet job on the only prominent Penn Stater who has had the guts and the courage to stand up for the truth of this matter is beyond outrageous even by the standards of this particular story. Now here's what Franco actually had to say, which is ah, really pretty good. We know that Joe had been falsely attacked and accused, and, and so that, that drives us. If Joe had one inkling that Jerry Sanders was a pedophile, this one little inkling, believe me, he, there'd be no cover up and he would have been the first one to move forward to do something. Our goal was to restore Joe's legacy. We know who Joe is. And it's not the picture that they painted. All right, now all that is fantastic from Franco. But the viewer has already been told he's a nut job and not to believe him. And by the way, this notion of obsession, this really gets me. Because somehow it is a negative to be obsessed with trying to fix an injustice. That somehow because you are driven and are willing to risk your reputation, your resources, your potential livelihood in the future, and all sorts of other things in order to try to fix what you strongly believe is an injustice, that somehow that's a negative? How is that not a positive? Franco Harris deserves an enormous amount of credit for having the guts to stand up when no one else would. Not one other prominent Penn State person would stand up because they were afraid. They were all cowards, except for Franco Harris. And this is, this is what he gets? After being fooled into doing an interview, which, by the way, Bill Ryder didn't even do, and Bill Ryder didn't do the Michael Pilato interview, and I'm told he may not have done any of the interviews in this particular piece. Now, I actually contacted Bill Ryder via email, he did not return that, and on Twitter, and I simply asked him a question. What conspiracy does Franco Harris believe in? What conspiracy? And he finally responded by taking a shot at me, not saying anything about... Franco Harris. The reality is, he has no answer for that. He did not answer the question, and instead, simply decided he was going to take a shot and then run. So here, he gets an interview with a false pretense with Franco, doesn't actually even do the interview, calls him a conspiracy nut, and then won't even answer the question, what conspiracy does he believe in? And remember, we're not the conspiracy people. 
Louis Free is the only person here who believes in a conspiracy. He believes in a criminal conspiracy to cover up crimes without any evidence whatsoever and without a logical narrative that makes any damn sense. And yet Franco Harris is the conspiracy guy? Here's how the piece ends, wrapping up this beautiful metaphor using Michael Pilato's mural to make their point, unscrubbing Joe Paterno from the mural, and then an interesting Q&A with this lying scumbag of a reporter. Students, one man doesn't represent all of us. A lot of people have focused on one part of the mural. There's over 360 people on that mural, inspirational figures. That's really who we are. That's the culture of State College. So now the Bill Ryder, Bill Ryder, you did a fantastic job with that piece. It's hard to believe it's been two years since that unprecedented and horrific situation on so many levels uh, happened. Uh, that the big thing that I took away from that piece is when the student was just talking about one person doesn't define the university. Well, Joe Paterno did for so many years. Yeah. You were there when this whole thing unfolded. Take me through what you saw literally on the front lawn of Paterno's house. I was there the, the day that Paterno was fired. I was there every day that led up to that. And it was a, it was, there were riots, there were demonstrations, and it was a group of people, young people who gathered in front of Joe Paterno's home and didn't understand the magnitude of the crimes that had happened. And, you know, I was one of those people who were outraged at Penn State, not just because of what happened, because of their response to it. Mm -hmm. That certainly played out in Paterno's Long. I went to Sandusky's home. They, I almost got arrested. Sandusky called the police on me. There was just an aura and a feeling in Happy Valley. They didn't understand this was bigger than football. Way bigger than Way bigger. football. And now... All right. Now, that last little antidote that Bill tells you, I believe is totally false. He says that the Sandusky's called the police on him. Well, I called Dottie Sandusky, and she says she never called the police on anybody, that there were a couple of episodes where reporters were parking in their driveway and on their lawn in a place where they had put up a no parking sign, and they had to call the police to get them to remove their cars. So that must be what he's talking about. My guess is it's a blatant exaggeration to somehow make the point that State College and Penn State didn't get the magnitude of the crimes, which is a bunch of baloney, when the day after the aftermath of the riots, there was a massive candlelight vigil for the victims before they were even actually technically victims in the case as of yet. And oh, by the way, with Michael Pilato, one thing he wanted to mention was he specifically asked them to put in the piece that he had taken the halo, not just off of Joe Paterno's head, which has been widely reported, but off of all of those in the mural. And that this was just another example of blatant inaccuracy and sensationalism to fit a particular narrative. This story is a disgrace. Bill Ryder ought to be disgraced. Of course, he won't be. Because one of the many problems our side faces in this story is Every member of the media knows we're fair game because no one else in the media is going to stand up to protect us because there's no standard of journalism. So they can go ahead and call Franco Harris whatever he wants and not even answer a question as to what that's based on on Twitter and no one calls them on it because they have built this giant wall around their false narrative. And this is yet another classic example of it. It needed to be called out. Michael Pilato and Franco Harris did a hell of a job under difficult circumstances, and this is an abomination. The media malpractice continues. Check out Framing Paterno. That's www.framingpaterno.com for more on this continuing story.